I'm Trudy Kerr and welcome to The Interviewer. In this series, I talk to artists, campaigners, men and women of influence, musicians, performers, sportsmen and women, politicians, businessmen and women, and anyone who shapes the fabric of our society. Today I am joined by a multi-talented woman. My guest is a psychotherapist, a businesswoman, a television presenter, a mother, a wife, and a darn funny and brilliant woman. Mariella Demek was on the interview almost a year ago to the day we talked about COVID, mental health, and how to survive the global pandemic. But today, I'm talking to Mariella about a topic I never dreamed would be the theme of our conversation. Today, we're talking about can cannabis, weed, marijuana, in the light of Mariella being appointed as the executive chairperson of the new Cannabis Authority, following Malta becoming the first EU nation to legalize cannabis in December last year. Mariella, what a surprise to be having <laughs> this conversation. First of all, welcome. Lovely to see you. My goodness. Always, always very happy to see you, Trudy. Well, always. listen, we are going to talk about cannabis in a minute. I, I just never, ever thought that this would be a phone call I would make to you. And I'm like, Mariella, we, you've got to come on the show. We've got to talk about weed, man. Um, but before we go on, let's talk about how you are. Uh, we did talk about... COVID last time you were here and thank you so much because you touched so many people's lives. We were in the middle of a lockdown and it was very difficult times. Now we're easing our way out of that. How are you? How is your situation? How do you see the world right now? Well, I think if we're going to, I mean, I think the aftermath of COVID is going to be felt in the coming years. I believe that people have suffered and are still suffering. I think it's taken its toll on various levels. Uh, first of all, an uh, economic sense. I think there are people who have suffered economically, mentally. I think the issue of loneliness has really hit home. Um, people have had a hard time because even they have lost people and they have not been able to be present when people were sick because of COVID rules. Um, the fact that people could not, young people, uh, for example, my 18-year-old daughter is sitting at home instead of going to university. She's learning online. Students have suffered. I think it's been tough all, all along. However, I always believe that when we deal with difficult situations in our life, we build up our resilience. I mean, in the face of all this, I think there have been, there have been a lot of people who have shown how resilient they are. And we also begin to recognize how people care about each other. I think we, we, we will look back on this and just wonder about it for a long, long way. To I think we will. I think we'll also forget about a lot oh, of Oh, we will? Oh, Brilliant. I think Brilliant. we will. I think we will because we tend to put behind us, you know, it's like when women give birth and they forget how painful it is and they decide to have another kid, you know, it's, it's I've literally. I've always wondered about that. No, no, I'm not a parent no, and I'm no, like, but... what the hell happened? <laughs> really? I mean, you forget how painful it is. I mean, most people do, you know, most people tend to block out, you know, the, the difficult things. We learn about ourselves and hopefully we don't get stuck in, in you know, in how we suffered, but we learn from it and we grow from it. Well, okay, look, let's talk about your role because I'm really excited about this. But before we go into the role itself and your decision to take the role, I want to talk about cannabis and be very clear what we are referring to. So let's identify. Wikipedia states cannabis, also known as marijuana, among other names, is a psychoactive drug from the cannabis plant. The cannabis plant has been used as a drug for both recreational and Etiological. Etiological purposes, thank you so much. Cannabis, also known as marijuana, among other names, is a psychoactive drug from the cannabis plant. The cannabis plant has been used as a drug for both recreational and ethological purposes in a various range of traditional medicines for centuries. Tetrohydrocannabinoids. That is THC. That's what we know as THC. THC. I was going for the posh long version yeah, of that. Yeah, don't need to. Is the main psychoactive component of cannabis, which is one of the 483 known compounds. Now, this is a whole bunch of big words that I struggle to even pronounce. And I think that perhaps a lot of us don't understand that. But there is a main theme here, which is psychoactive. So before we talk about 
anything else, let's define what cannabis is and what we're talking about, because we are talking about today cannabis as a recreational drug. What does psychoactive mean? And what is cannabis really? Okay. Cannabis can be divided into, into two parts. Let's simplify it. You have cannabis. Um, there are two main components that are uh, derived and that are used. You have the THC, and that is the part that's going to give you that feeling of feeling high. Um, uh, it's a mind-altering substance. And then there's the CBD. The CBD has a calming effect, but you don't, you don't get the feeling of uh, feeling high, and, and it's not a mind-altering substance. Um, when cannabis is used not for medical purposes, um, uh, it is used because it makes a person experience a certain feeling that is pleasurable to them. At no point in time uh, would I ever promote or suggest that somebody um, should use cannabis. Um, although I am the chairperson of the authority on the responsible use of cannabis, it does not in any way mean that I would ever suggest or, or promote anybody to feel better with a substance. We're going to come to that. With a substance. And I'm going to grill you on that you can in a few minutes. But, but can I just say something? Yes. Um, it's not a surprise that I am working within the field Stop. of drugs because i'm coming to that in a okay. minute you're answering or cut that because you're answering all the questions so we are going to come to all of that in just okay. a minute but before we get there because i want you to, to to voice your opinion and why you got involved but i'm still trying to define what cannabis is so you talked about the fact that it could give somebody a, a pleasurable feeling that perhaps, and I'm assuming it's a pleasurable feeling, but you can also get quite paranoid with cannabis as well. There are side effects. There are side effects for some people, yes. So if a person, and, and, and the difficulty that exists in this is that there isn't a, a sign on anyone's forehead saying, listen, you will react this way with cannabis and you will react another way with cannabis. It depends very much on the type of cannabis. It depends very much on the level of THC. It depends very much if chemicals have been added. It depends very much on the quality. There are people who will get addicted to cannabis and there are people who will smoke cannabis twice a year and move on. Well, let's you know? be very clear about this THC as well, because before we go any further, cannabis has a great deal of healing properties. We talked about that. You just mentioned that. But when, in relation to the recent, recent legislation, I just want to be clear, we're not talking about CBD oil. We're not talking about that area. We are actually talking about adults being able to carry up to seven grams of cannabis and grow no more than four plants at home. Uh, and this is regular cannabis that we would refer to as dope or weed or marijuana. That's what we're talking about, yeah? Yes, and uh, if you're going to talk about... But even... Be, be, the thing is this. Uh, you talk about dope. Dope has um, many meanings. So I, won't, I wouldn't use dope because people can use dope for other kind of drugs and substances. Um, uh, medical marijuana has THC in it too. But we're not going to be talking about medical yeah. marijuana. We are going to be talking about... Um, um, cannabis that is um, not used for medical reasons. Okay. So without wanting to typecast, let's get to the real gritty about this, because without wanting to typecast, who does this change in the legislation appeal to? Who in Malta smokes cannabis? First of all, um, I have to say that I have been working within the field of addiction and feel of substance misuse for over two decades. I spent 21 years working and running and starting off being a part of the team that started off the whole idea of rehabilitation in Malta. So um, I know not just from research, but I also know because when you spend over 20 years working with substance abusers, you tend to know what the, what the traits are. You tend to know what the substances are. So according to research, and also according to the experience I've had working with substance abusers and then working in my private clinic when I had my pri private clinic open, the substance most abused in Malta is alcohol and cannabis. Okay. And wow. it has been. And it has been for many, many years. And I'm talking easily 10, 20 years. 
it is the most uh, uh, alcohol and cannabis are the most abused. And if you look at the statistics, if you look at the national focal point and you look at the, uh, the highest incidence of arrests made for substance abuse, the highest incidence of arrests made for substance abuse is the arrests made for cannabis. Cannabis is used by a wide range of people. You have professional people, you have adults, you have 40-year-olds, 50-year-olds who will maybe work all day, work hard, and maybe at the end of the day uh, they might smoke or on the weekend. Um, you have, it's true, young people, you have many, all types. You have from the highest uh, educational level to the lowest. It is a drug like alcohol that is used. Widely used. Widely used, and it's been widely used, but obviously undercover. Obviously, um, um, unlike alcohol, cannabis has always been, marijuana has always been bought illegally through the black market. From where? From people who break the law. <laughs> <laughs> Enough, Would you like names and addresses? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 that's okay. But where has it been coming from? Because now the legislation has changed. It's, um, it's, it's, let me tell you, around the world, let me not, let me not uh, make Malta seem like we're some country being run by drug lords, because we're not. Let me make it very clear. Around the world, you have a situation where drugs are being bought and sold through a black market system. It's, it's, it's a fact. Are there people in Malta, were there people in Malta prior to this that were growing locally or was it being imported? I don't think that the majority of cannabis being sold in Malta was local. Okay. Um, but I, I don't like, you know, just saying sweeping statements unless I have facts. Of course. But from my experience of working within this field, I don't think that the majority of cannabis being uh, smoked in Malta was local. Um, uh, the thing is this, the thing is this, the difference is going to be this. It's not going to be a free for all through the, it's not going to be a free for all. There aren't going to be coffee shops around the island and, and people smoking joints walking in the streets. It's not, that is not what this law is about. This law is about safety. This law is about harm reduction. This law is about creating a framework where if an 18 year old unfortunately decides that he wants, he or she wants to smoke cannabis, instead of going to a dealer, because when you go to a dealer to buy cannabis, that dealer is not just selling marijuana, cannabis, that dealer will be selling other drugs. So that 18 year old is exposed to being able to buy not just cannabis, that the 18 year old might be exposed to buying other drugs. The organizations are going to be offering something different. The organizations are going to be selling cannabis that the authority will be testing its quality. The authority has to know the level of THC, the different strands of cannabis that is being sold. The people who sell are going to be trained to recognize red flags. There's going to be no promotion. There's going to be no pushing. There's going to be no dealing. There's going to be no profit in these organizations. That 18-year-old who unfortunately has decided to smoke cannabis will only be offered cannabis and will be educated and will be told, if you smoke this cannabis, it has X amount level of THC in it. The effect will be this. So don't smoke this and try and go and drive. Or don't smoke this and go and think you're going to study because you're not, you're going to fall asleep. There is a safety zone. Is it the best solution? The best is that you don't need substances to feel better, calmer. It's true. But the truth is, this is the safest way. See, d d d Mariella, let's go through this in a, in okay. a, in a, in a audit go. way Ask. by asking the first question. You were originally speaking out against the cannabis legislation. Now you're chairing the Cannabis Authority. Yes. And even when you said, spoke then, you talked about it as if you really don't approve of cannabis. Is that right? And if so, why are you chairing I will, this? I, I'll tell you why I'm chairing it, because I want a good job done. And I believe it can be done in a good way. I believe that um, I can sit back and just complain or I can be part of something and make it work. But you're not 
condoning cannabis. You're still not condoning cannabis. I will cannabis never. Even. Listen, I will. My, I, the authority, the board, we are not people. I don't even think the government to pass the law would ever promote substance abuse. It's not about promoting substance abuse. It's not about that. It's about harm reduction. It's about making it safe. And let me tell you something. When I worked in rehabilitation, the thing, the first thing I learned was that when you have a person who has a problem of addiction, the best solution is total abstinence. Not only total abstinence from drugs, but total abstinence even from alcohol, even if you don't have an alcohol problem. Why? Because if somebody has an addiction problem, they need to stay away. So then that begs the question, and I think myself and a lot of people who are outside yes, of uh, the medical or the, the psycholo uh, psychology sphere would yes. be asking the same question. Was the legalization of cannabis at this time a political stunt? When you say yourself that the best way to keep a, to, to deal with an addiction is to keep away and abstain from it, legalizing it, surely that no, makes it more accessible. Okay, let me finish what I was saying. Because what I was saying is this, that part of my education in working with substance abuse was uh, having to accept that no matter how hard you work at helping people not need to depend on substances, no matter, the truth of the matter is that people will abuse substances. The truth of the matter is that no matter the work that we did, 20 years directly involved, I was very aware that at the end of the day, that even when we worked with people, that we have to understand that we cannot say because you're not abstinent for everything, I'm not going to help you. I had to create and help create another section in our service called harm reduction. I had to learn about that. I had to understand it. And I had to accept that. And this is reality around the world. This is not about, this, this is not about what is politically correct or not. This is about being aware of research and being aware of exactly what this law is. This law is not about making money. This law is not about, this law is about creating a harm reduction safety place. This law is about being, and this is why I took on this role, not because I will ever promote, not because the board will ever promote substance abuse. It's because at the end of the day, we need to accept that harm reduction has to exist. Otherwise, the people who do choose to abuse substances, and not all of them are addicts, we have to be honest and say that, they need to have the safest way possible to do that. I would rather that a person who has decided, although I'm not going to promote it, who has decided that they want to smoke, on, I would rather they do it in the safest way possible. We have a, a section that I'm creating, because this is my thing that I believe in a lot, that has to do with education, harm reduction, training. I mean, we're going to offer training, not just to the people who are selling the cannabis, but to organizations, to businesses who are worried, to the police, to anybody who would like to know how to deal with these issues. I'm going to be devil's advocate for one second and ask you that question once again. Myself, perhaps, and other people viewing this legalization of cannabis as perhaps a political stunt. Let's be the most liberal country in the EU when it comes to cannabis. Was there ever anything in your mind that suggested this was a political stunt? Or was it always about controlling a problem situation? Well, I think, unfortunately, the majority of people who hear about this law don't know it, don't read about it. They don't even read the articles. They read the titles of articles. You see it on social media. You see it on the papers. I think there's a very small percentage of people who really know what this law is. Because the law is not liberal. The law basically is creating a space so that accepting the reality of the situation that the most abused substance is alcohol and cannabis um, and creating a space so that this is done in the safest way possible. If the organizations that are being set up, I mean, the organizations are being set up and they are non-profit. Mm -hmm. 
the organizations being set up are for the Maltese. So this is not for tourism. This is not to make money. The money is being made in the medical field. I took on this job. It has nothing to do with politics at all for me to, to take on this job. I took on this job because this is a challenge. It is a field that I understand in. I'm very interested in. And I would like Malta, since Malta is the first country in the EU, I would like Malta to be a bit of a, we can be a pilot project. Because the truth is that although Malta is the first country to say, listen, we are going to create this law that allows a safe space for people, not to make money, not to go crazy, not to create a, another Amsterdam, but to do it with, in a harm reduction way, then, then yes, I would, like more. I would like us to do a good job of it. I would like us to conduct research. I would like us to show that, listen, up front, does it work? Doesn't it work? Will everything work? No, I don't think everything will work perfectly, but we will learn along the way. You're facing this head on and basically addressing that there is an issue and an issue that needs to be dealt with. And then we're talking about the quality, we're talking about the use, and we're talking about the, the control. But you in the past have spoken out against this legislation. Yes. So where, Mariela, for you was the tipping point to say, I'm not opposing it, I'm going to lead it? Because that's yes. a big turning point. Yes. Well, the reason the reason that I that I accepted to be the chairperson is because I believe the thing is when we were discussing, you know, when I'd be asked to go on TV, and uh, I always stated, always that in order, and I and I remember in one of the first program programs, one of the first. I mean, I have a photo of it. I look so young, so long ago. <laughs> Um, I remember Pepe Abzopardi discussing it. I'm not kidding. I think it was about nearly 15, 20 years ago discussing it. And I remember stating very clearly, uh, in order to do this move, and I think even the second time when, when they discussed it, in order to, to do this move, research needs to be conducted. And, and I know that with me being in this position and the board members that I have, that, that we, at the end of the day, are going to set out the policies, procedures. I know that um, we are going to give a lot of importance to research. So people can say, this is going to create a problem, this is going to make it worse, this is going to make it better, this is going to... We all have our assumptions. We are going to conduct research. And it's not about what we think, what we feel. We are going to conduct research, and at the end of a year, two years, five years, we are going to know what the outcome is. I would have never agreed to this law if it was not, um, uh, if it was not being monitored and done within the framework that it's going to be done. I think my thoughts were not when I was, you know, of the job. I, I think my thoughts were more, okay, let me understand the law. So the first thing I did was I sat down and I read the law. And I tried to understand the law. Let me understand what they want of the authority, which they asked me to be chairperson of. And when I saw that the authority was, was an opportunity for us to do a really good job with this law, that is what I thought about. I thought about, can I do a good job? Can I, with the team of people that I will have with me, do a good job? And if this law is passed, make sure that it is passed in the right way as it has been planned to be. And I feel that at the end of the day, I will do my best. So I don't think my thinking was about, do I agree with it or not? It's passed. It's done. What can I do about it now? There's a lot of work to be done. I have no doubt. <laughs> and we will be talking about what you're going to be doing in just a second because your term is three years. Yes. In a moment, we're going to talk about that. Before we get there, you've talked about cannabis in saying that you would not encourage anybody to take cannabis at all. We're going to talk about the negatives. Are there not any positives of cannabis? Can you not see any good side effects or, or, or results from smoking cannabis? Because there's a lot of people, obviously, that do it. There are a lot of people that do it, and I think the effect of people that do it is that they can switch off, calm down. It's like taking 
Uh, uh, I mean, it depends. It depends on the level of THC. You can take a glass of wine and you can take a, a sm smoke a joint with a low level of THC that will give you the same effect depending on your tolerance, state of mind, etc. At the end of the day, we live within a society where, uh, where we are constantly uh, trying to feel better very quickly. It's, it's like it's a mentality. It's a society we live in. I mean, I remember when I was young and I was watching TV and I wanted to change this channel, I would have to stand up, walk to the TV and press the button for each time I wanted to change the channel. I mean, we've devised a system where we can barely move our finger. You know, it's all about instant gratification. How healthy is that? So, And that is the reason why I will never promote uh, substance use or abuse because at the end of the day we need to learn how to understand what's going on with us we need to be able to recognize what we really need let's talk about the negatives what are the negatives of cannabis i know that some people you talked about the thc levels some people are prone to be getting paranoid and some people i know have 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 suffered from depression from it but what can you list should we, should we be worried about people who are now saying, hey, listen, cannabis is legal, let's, let's smoke a joint? First of all, if anybody's listening and they smoke cannabis and they've been smoking cannabis and they have their system of smoking cannabis and they don't have these side effects, we have to recognize that there are a number of people who smoke cannabis and have no side effects and lead a very normal life and move on. So let me make that very clear. But in some situations, unfortunately, um, cannabis is not good for everyone. I mean, canna it's not good. To cannabis will affect certain people in dangerous ways. Such as. So all I am saying is that if somebody is smoking cannabis and they are beginning to feel uneasy, more anxious, paranoid, they are uh, not smoking for sure the right amount of THC in their cannabis. And now if the, when the organization's open, they can have a discussion with the people who are selling because the people will be trained to tell them, look, if you're feeling this, this is not good for you. This THC is too high for you. Lower it, take something less strong. Or these people need to realize that it's not something for them. The risk is uh, yours to take, you know what I mean? But yes, people, some people, it can make them feel paranoid. In even more rare cases, and especially when you buy black market cannabis that can be laced with chemicals or pharmaceuticals, other pharmaceuticals. Yes, if um, a person smokes too much or is already predisposed or vulnerable to suffering from psychosis, yes, a person can suffer from psychosis. They can be um, drug-induced psychosis. Um, and when that happens, that person should never touch cannabis and when we talk about education, these are the things that we are going to educate about. What, when, what are the situations where um, you really need to not be thinking about whether you should or you shouldn't. Just make a decision and don't, you know. So if anybody is realizing, A, either that it affects them negatively, makes them feel worse, B, that they are depending on it to function, C, that it's cutting them off from their normal routines, then there is a problem there. You mentioned that cannabis will be available to purchase from recognized licensed. Sourced, licensed sources, which means that this is going to be controlled. Where is that cannabis coming from? Where is that being it's grown? It's going to be grown in Malta. That's what I wanted it's to It's not get. going to be imported. It's going to be grown in Malta. And controlled. Yes, it's going to be grown in Malta. And the, and the place where they grow it, the quality, the monitoring, the security, the amount of money uh, spent, um, the amount of money that's been, it's going to be all legalized and monitored. And just to confirm, because you mentioned before about pharmaceuticals are the people that make the money. There could be a parallel drawn between pharmaceuticals and this. I assume that this controlled going growing of marijuana is essentially not a profit-making exercise. It's not a profit. It's not for profit. And we are going to create a system. We are going to create a system to ensure that it's not a profit. It's not a loss either. So we need to support the organizations 
also that we cannot we cannot put too much pressure on them so that they will end up at a loss because that's setting people up and we don't want to do that. You see, now you've changed my perception and understanding of your decision and of what the authority is for. Because I have to be quite honest with you, I was fairly sceptical and shocked when I saw that the law had been introduced as a layperson. When I saw that you were involved, I was really shocked. But now I get it. Yeah. Now I get it. And I'm really thrilled, Mariella, that it's you that is leading the next three years. What are those three years going to see? You're going to see research. So basically, in the next three years, we are going to create a system, a system where every move that we make is being researched. So when we make decisions, policies, systems, and when we're doing this, because in our mind, we want to create uh, a safe space, harm reduction, um, and we want to educate and train and support society as a whole, the cannabis users, but also the rest of the society, the kids, the grown-ups, the people with mental problems. It's, it's, it is keeping all these people in mind. So everything we build and the framework, the policies, procedures, is thinking, trying to keep in mind everyone. It is not about what you think, what you feel, what you want. It is about facts, scientific, objective uh, results. And that is the aim in the next three years. And making this safe space for people who choose yes. to use it. Yes, I really want to do that because I have seen so many, so many people suffer, you know, and so many people feel judged and so many people want to talk about their cannabis use but feel that if they do, they will be judged and they will be ostracized. I mentioned, humbly mentioned, that you've changed my mind during the course of this interview. You've enlightened me, and you've certainly enlightened me on the purpose of what the authority is. I'm thrilled that you made that decision, and I'm thrilled that you could come on the interviewer and share your thoughts with myself and everybody else. My pleasure always, Trudy. Thank you. For those willing to change the world one step at a time. For those dreaming of sustainable living. For those striving to find a healthier balance. For those always believing. Browns and Viridian. Love the planet, love yourself.